Pierre Jeannette is perhaps one of the most influential figures in the history of psychology that most people have never heard of. Jeannette founded a school called Psychological Analysis, which, chronologically speaking, came before the works of men like Sigmund Freud, Alfred Adler, and Carl Jung, thus making him one of the earliest pioneers in not only the scientific study of the unconscious, but also in developing a system that would evolve into modern-day psychiatry. Jeannette was born in Paris in 1859 and grew up during the Franco-German War, which tore apart his native homeland. The war ended in 1870 and France quickly recovered, and by 1886 Jeannette was publishing his first scientific papers. Jeannette lived through both world wars and retired after a successful career and died in 1947 at the age of 87. He came from an upper middle class family that produced many scholars. At the age of 15 he slipped into a severe depression as he tried to find meaning in his life. He was able to overcome this depression by becoming an avid student and devoting his life to philosophy. Jeannette went on to graduate some of the most prestigious universities in France. In 1882, the famous French physician Jean-Martin Charcot published a paper on hypnosis that was read at the Academy of Sciences, thus giving hypnotism scientific validity. Jeannette was enamored by Charcot's paper and directed his studies to better understand it. In 1882, at the age of 22, he was appointed as Professor of Philosophy at the Lyceum of Châteauroux, but left after only one year to fill a vacancy at the far superior Lyceum Le Harve, a school he remained at for over six years. During his years at Le Harve, he published many notable works on philosophy. He never lost interest in neuroses and hypnotism. In fact, he spent much of his spare time at the Le Havre Hospital doing volunteer work and conducting psychiatric research on his own. He was searching for a suitable topic for his thesis for his doctorate degree and was looking for a patient who was having hallucinations to conduct his research on mechanisms of perception. However, the Le Havre did not have any patients that fit the criteria but he was directed by the well-known physician Dr. Gilbert to a very interesting case of a woman known as Leone, who could be hypnotized from a distance. Leone agreed to participate in Jeanette's experiments over the course of several years. He very quickly learned that she was very easy to hypnotize from a distance and was especially susceptible to suggestion and would carry out any commands exactly as stated. He wrote a paper about these experiments which was eventually read at the Society of Psychology and Physiology, a society that was under the leadership of one of Jeannette's inspirations, Jean-Martin Charcot. There was much interest in the paper and many famous physicians came to Le Havre to study Leone, for they had never seen a case of hypnotism and suggestion being possible from a distance. This is also how Jeannette first became acquainted with Charcot. As Jeannette continued to study hypnotism, he made a shocking discovery. Leone reported that she had been magnetized as a child, which led Jeannette to discover the works of the Marquis de Pusiger and the other members of the animal magnetism movement. To his surprise, all the cutting edge discoveries that Charcot and other men were claiming to have made had already been discovered by the magnetists almost a hundred years earlier. This discovery led him to always get an in-depth patient history. This may seem like common practice today, but back then it was unheard of. He published his thesis in 1889 and was awarded his doctorate of philosophy. However, he knew that if he wanted to continue his psychopathological research, he would need to obtain a medical doctorate, which he went on to achieve in 1893. While studying for his medical degree, Jeannette spent much of his time working with hysterical patients at the Saul Petrieri under the guidance of Charcot. As a result, the two men grew close, but a few weeks after Jeannette achieved his medical doctorate, Charcot met an untimely end with his sudden death. During the next nine years, Jeannette continued his research at the Saul Petrieri and published many papers. 
During the same time period, Jeanette was married and started a family of his own. Jeanette's studies covered a wide array of topics ranging from the microscopic anatomy of the brain to experimental psychology and criminology. Jeanette's fame grew and his achievements multiplied. In order to fully understand Jeanette's psychological analysis, we must first understand its philosophical foundation. Religious in his youth, Jeanette lost his faith around the age of 17 and set out to develop a philosophy that could bridge the gap between science and religion, a goal that, as an old man, he admitted he did not achieve. In Jeanette's earliest works, he stated that science was born out of man's urge to conquer the world, for men have always had to defend themselves against natural forces. They do so by mastering them and then by trying to modify nature through our understanding of it. In contrast to science, he discussed moral philosophy as well, including topics like freedom, responsibility, conscience, justice, and the existence of God and religion. He used his philosophy to define things, analyze, and break them down into their individual elements. From here, he converted to psychology to see how the individual elements came to be put together in the first place. Besides his experiments on Leone that were already mentioned, some of his other cases included a 19-year-old girl who would randomly be struck by fits of terror with seemingly no cause. Using the technique of automatic writing, where the patient unconsciously writes down whatever comes up automatically without using their conscious mind by directing their conscious attention elsewhere. Jeanette was able to use the unconscious writings as a clue and discovered that when the girl was seven, two men had played a practical joke on her and popped out from behind a curtain to scare her. The shock was so severe that her conscious mind suppressed the memory by creating a second personality within her and hiding the experience within it. During her fits, this secondary personality would take over and act out its perpetual state of fear. Jeanette was able to develop rapport with the patient, who then accepted his explanation and took his suggestions, thus curing her of the fits. Jeanette referred to these unconscious phenomena as psychological automatism and split them into two categories. Total automatism, where the entire conscious mind temporarily disappears, such as in catalepsy, a trance-like state that is accompanied by the entire body becoming stiff and rigid, or partial automatism, where most of the consciousness disappears, leaving behind a secondary personality that has been split off and remained hidden from the rest of the mind, like in the case of the patient having fits of terror. Another form of total automatism was the hypnotic state, which after extensive study, Jeanette connected with alternating personalities, which we know as multiple personality disorder. Unlike partial automatism, where the left behind personality is a fragment of the patient's actual ego and experience, in multiple personalities, the entire ego disappears and is replaced with an entirely new, unique personality that exists within the unconscious. As interesting as these occurrences are, they are relatively rare, and so a majority of Jeanette's work was on partial automatism, for he realized the neurotic symptoms were the equivalent of post-hypnotic suggestion, which fit the category of partial automatism. This means that neurotic symptoms stem from some sort of traumatic event that put the patient into a hypnotic-like suggestible state. Just like the patient will act out the physician's demands while hypnotized, they will act out their symptoms which are shaped by the traumatic event whenever they are triggered in the present. Jeanette believed that some people were more susceptible to hypnosis and neurotic symptoms because they had what he termed low psychological tension, or in other words, a less active mind, thus making it easier to subdue and sink down into the unconscious. His treatments included using techniques like hypnotism and automatic writing to discover the forgotten memory that was causing symptoms below the awareness of the conscious mind. 
From here, he would bring the memory to the patient's attention, where they could then dissolve it by acknowledging the pathological fixed idea or fundamental core belief that was born out of a delusion created by the trauma. Once the symptoms disappeared, he would then implement a program of intellectual training to increase psychological tension and keep the symptoms from returning. This last part was particularly important, for when the pathological fixed idea was removed, many times another pathological belief would bubble up and replace it, causing a relapse in symptoms. Most of the unconscious symptoms discussed so far apply to what was called back then hysteria. Jeanette, however, deemed another class of neurotics which suffered from what he called psychoasthenia. The major difference between hysteria and psychoasthenia was that the unconscious fixed idea caused unconscious symptoms in the hysteric that would then manifest whenever they were triggered and reduced to a hypnotic-like state as a defense mechanism whereas the pathological fixed idea caused conscious symptoms in patients with psychothenia, usually in the form of obsessions or phobias. In hysteria, the patient has plenty of mental energy but not enough mental activity or psychological tension to put all of it to use, hence why it is so easy for all the extra energy to form hysterical symptoms. In the case of psychothenia, it's not so much low psychological tensions that are at the root of the problem, but rather low psychological force, or in other words, not enough mental energy to deal with life's demands. Therefore, treating psychothenia involves restoring mental energy, usually by rest and relaxation, reducing the amount of mental energy being expended by cutting off difficult, draining people out of their life, or perhaps by switching to a less stressful job, and finally, letting go of all the resentments and regrets of the past that waste mental energy. Later in his life, Jeanette did an extensive study on the psychology of religion and attempted to explain man-religious temperament and rituals in psychological terms. He saw how religious moral teachings were much more effective than social teachings, for when one gets their morality in the form of a commandment from God, there is a sense of pride in acting morally, rather than doing it begrudgingly by following rules. Morality itself could be the source of neurotic symptoms as well, as can be seen in Jeanette's famous case of treating a man known as Achilles. After returning from a business trip, Achilles' wife reported he was unlike himself, coming off rather somber. Shortly after his return, he became possessed by the devil and was sent to the Salpetrieri Psychiatric Unit. While there, he came under the care of Jeanette. Achilles remained possessed for months and intermittently spoke in a demonic voice. All attempts to communicate with Achilles failed and Jeanette was unable to hypnotize him. One day, Jeanette put a pencil in Achilles' hand and whispered into his ear, asking who he was dealing with. Achilles' hand started moving right away and wrote that he was the devil. Jeanette asked the devil to prove it was him by raising Achilles' arm against his will, which he promptly did. Then, he asked for further proof and asked him if he could put Achilles into a hypnotic state, which he did. Once he was hypnotized, Jeanette was finally able to communicate with the real Achilles. It turned out that while on his business trip, he had ended up cheating on his wife and coming from a religious background, could not deal with the guilt and felt himself to be evil for the betrayal. It was only after confessing his secret and being assured of his wife's forgiveness that the possession resided, thus giving psychological validity to the religious practice of confession, a phenomenon known as catharsis in the medical world. Jeanette's work inspired many people, including some of the biggest names in history of psychology. Freud, Jung, and Adler all reference his work many times. However, his death in 1947 went largely unnoticed, and his work was gradually forgotten. His books went out of print and became very rare. Although history may have forgotten Pierre Jeannette, his work remains like a vast buried treasure.